we have three boys and four girls. Yep. Oh, so fun. three okay. boys, four girls, four teenagers at the moment, a giant grocery bill every week. Hello, Marty. Today, we get to talk with Gina, Gina Hackle. She's an awesome lady, a friend, a wife, a mother, a daughter of King Jesus, and she lives in Appleton, Wisconsin. And we're going to be interviewing her about her apostolate. Gina, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Marty, take it away. You know, I'm so excited to have you on the show. We were talking earlier. We had a couple of things in common. But just take a few minutes just to tell us a little bit about yourself um, and about your apostolate and a little bit about how that whole thing got started. Yeah, great. Um, well, as Josh said, I'm a, a wife and mother, uh, which is my primary responsibility. I have seven kiddos ranging in age from 18 down to seven. Ooh, oh, that's so so fun. yeah, all still in the house, but not for long. Our oldest uh, will be following in his parents' footsteps and heading to UW Madison next year. Nice. Very, we're very excited. Um, but how many boys? How many girls? You know, <clears throat> we have three boys and four girls. Yep. So, so three okay. boys, four girls, four teenagers at the moment, a giant grocery bill every week. And How much? How much? Yeah. <laughs> I can't give away the secrets. <laughs> In case my husband listens to the show, I can't give away the secrets. <laughs> Just kidding. But it's a lot. It's a lot. So, yeah. Um, so I... I love being a mom. We've done some homeschooling through the years. That's been um, a great gift. But at the moment, all of our kids are in school. So I spend my days um, doing many things. But I teach some cycling classes. I lead our women's group, which I know we're going to get back to. Yes. And I cook a lot of food, et cetera, et cetera. What, so. do you, what do you love to cook? What's your go-to? Yeah, what's your favorite? Uh, what's a crowd pleaser? Crowd pleaser is... Um, Sausage and pepper pasta. Ooh, I like it because it's, it, it hit, I love one dish dinners and uh, gets all, you know, protein, veggies, all the good stuff, all in one big, huge pot. Nice. <laughs> How long have you been teaching cycle classes? So I started teaching at the YMCA, uh, which I did for a year. And then now it's been almost a year at a more of a boutique cycling studio called Cycle Bar. So two years oh total. Gosh. Is it really hard to what I die? I'm hearing you talk and I'm already sweating. I'm, like, oh, I'm so out of shape. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's a great workout. It's super fun. The community aspect of it um, is, is great. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. And then tell me, tell us a little bit. I know you said you started a women's group. How did that whole thing come about? Yeah. So our women's group has been going now for, I think, five or six years. Oh, and wow. I've been leading it now, I think, for four of those years. And for the first couple of years, actually, it, it got off the ground with a couple of young moms who were part of FOCUS, the Fellowship of Catholic University Students. Yeah. And then they, you know, were now not with focus anymore, living in the real world. <laughs> and they wanted to do a, a Bible study together for moms. And so they connected with somebody uh, at a parish who happened to also be a mom at the school that our kids go to. And they just started throwing out invites. And I was, I would, got caught in that net and joined the study. And it was just a great group of eager moms who wanted that time uh, together to grow in community and in faith. And it started really beautifully. I think we had between 10 and 20 women that would come on and off, you know, oh, wow. kid, kids get sick here and there and whatever, yeah. but um, people would come in and out. We meet on Friday, met on Friday mornings. And as those women started growing their own families, they felt uh, that they needed to, you know, all the practical things of motherhood, like their kids needed to nap in the morning rather than be at Bible study yeah. at that time. So then they wanted mm -hmm. to shift to more of a morning time, but our group wanted to keep that time. And so uh, I said that I would move into leadership. We uh, continued to meet on Friday mornings. We offer childcare, which has been huge for us because oh, moms awesome. just, it's a great gift to moms. And over the years, it's snowballed quite a bit, obviously, by the grace of God and the movement of the Holy Spirit. And we now um, 
meet we on Fridays still. We have two different options of studies. One is the Reach More program where we've been training leaders, and the other is more of a evangelical introductory study on different topics. We use a number of different resource. We've used a number of different resources over the years, but we now have um, between probably thirty and forty women that come on Friday wow. mornings, and we have. Uh, a bigger network through email and we have a Facebook group of over a hundred women. Uh, yeah, we have, we have, um, we, just this year we started calling ourselves more of a women's group because yeah. we do offer, um, some events throughout the year. Like we had a, an advent event. We do socials monthly and we have the, like I mentioned, a Facebook group where we try to post, um, you know, short teaching videos and just allow for other community touch points mm-hmm. uh, in that mode. And the spirit's still moving. We have many other ideas and we'll just, we're just actually, I'm going to meet tomorrow with two of our other main leaders to vision out what's to come. So Ooh, we've been, awesome. we've been praying for that. You can pray for us as we try yeah. to follow God's lead and where he's taking our group into the future. I have, I have two questions. I'm curious. Are, is everyone still connected to the school? And is the school Catholic? Or how does that play out? Yeah, so it's a Catholic school. In, our, in Appleton, we have a system school uh, named Xavier. So all, none of the parishes have their own school. It's just one large school system at four different locations. There's two elementary schools, a middle school, and a high school. And, that's, that's but it's all, yeah, it's all one school. And... Most of the moms are from Xavier, although we do have a number of homeschool moms and we've branched out a little bit um, to some other Catholic schools in the area. The Appleton is surrounded by quite a number of other communities that are really close proximity. So as we've grown, it's we've reached more and more people and more and more people from other schools too have joined us, but the majority are from Xavier. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Hey, question uh, for you. Yeah. So you could probably be doing any number of ministries right now, but staying with mom's group for seven years. Why? Yeah. I think there's power in connecting with people who share a similar life experience. And for now, you know, I don't really connect with anyone more than I do with other moms who are working their way through what it's like to parent and we can connect on everything from, you know, the very practical things to much higher order things. Uh, but all of it comes back to, you know, how do we live as good Christian wives and mothers mm-hmm. in today's world? And our kids are experiencing a lot of similar things in the school environment and social mm-hmm. environments. And we can bring all of that before the Lord and, you know, evaluate it within our own hearts as we walk this road. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah. what what was the last meeting like? Like give us a quick layout. Like what is it? When if if I was a lady and I came to your cycling class and you invited me and I show up, what's it like? Yeah. So our our Friday studies are are awesome. We meet at St. Pius Parish in Appleton. They have a really mm-hmm. wonderful large narthex area. It's there's actually a north and a west. I don't know, but is, it's like, it's so big. Is that far yeah. from the school? So it's actually one of the four school locations. So okay. there are elementary kids at that campus, but uh, I bring up the two, nar- it's just a very large space and okay. they have a lot of breakout meeting rooms too. So it works really well. But uh, if you come in, you're, we start at, we open at nine o'clock and we have, we always have women that contribute goodies. So it's always quite the spread mm-hmm. because when moms have a chance to, you know, bake and share things. It's, it's always very well yeah. done. <laughs> and awesome. so we have, yeah, free goodies and coffee. We do social time from nine until about nine fifteen, nine nine thirty. 9 okay. 30. Um, so you're going to just see a lot of women mingling, connecting, little kids running around. Childcare opens at nine fifteen. So in the first 15 minutes, you're going to see a lot of kids running around yeah. and, um, yeah, then around 9.15, we have one of our groups starts the Reach More group. We have 10 women that are doing the Reach More program this year. And actually, just this last Friday, they finished the 12th session. Nice. So they it was our final Sweet. meeting. Yeah. 
Um, child care opens, that's in a separate room. We have a, a very gracious um, woman woman from our parish that offers that for us for free. Mm. So the kids go in there, they love it because, you know, cat chats playing on the TV and there's little snacks to be had. And mm -hmm. the Reach More group starts, the other group will continue their social time till about 9.30 and then both groups will be meeting simultaneously in their spaces, doing their content, you know, prayer discussion. Sometimes we do video series. Uh, this last um, session we've just been doing um, Sunday readings. So okay. the, gr mm -hmm. the group that was not doing the Reach More was doing Sunday readings. And then at about 1045, we close up with prayer in both spaces, go grab the kids, the kids run around while the moms socialize however long that they have, and then people start <laughs> heading out. And yeah, exactly. it's great. It's a highlight. Everybody loves it clearly. And I nice. think that's part of the power of it is that, and, and the reason why it's grown is because it's been so positive that, you know, People are always saying, you should come check it out. You should come check it out. Yeah. Check it out. yeah. I have a question. You know, we were talking earlier. You were a middle school teacher for yeah. seven years. I was yeah. a high school yeah. teacher in morality and sacraments. Um, juniors in high school for eight years, campus minister. God bless you. Grew up going to Catholic <laughs> school. Yeah, it was awesome. Grew up going to Catholic school my whole life. One of the things that's challenging is to actually have like a Catholic like setting where the parents are actually involved and want to grow in holiness and actually truly care about the faith and are not just putting, you know, kids in Catholic school because they just think that the teachers are going to take care of everything, you know? Right, right. So uh, we've been talking about as the EC, just ways to kind of make a change in schools. And we've been talking about that it's through apostolates with parents, which is essentially what you're doing, right? So right. how has that changed or impacted the school as a whole and how has that impacted your relationship with the community as a whole yeah i think you know you can think the ec talks about this a lot but just the power of relationships mm -hmm. and so i think more than um having program set up. It's just been through those grassroots relationships of women talking to other women when their kids are playing on the playground together after school and having those conversations uh, that can naturally kind of take its way to faith and then some natural invites to women's group. And really like the our growth over time has come from women who have said, I've just heard so much about your group and heard mm. the encouragement from the different moms. And it's, I think now we're at a size where it's, we're pretty well known <laughs> that we're like mm -hmm. a thing. Yeah. And so even moms that aren't able to come on Friday are curious about what's going on and it has become mm -hmm. much more of an open topic. Um, and I think it's really, yeah, it's enhanced. Of course it has enhanced the overall school community and you know there's a lot of ways that I'm sure we don't even see but ways that we have seen over time different impacts that we've had through prayer things that we've you know specific things we've been praying for that we've seen happen or um, more general things that you know I like to yeah. think that we've had a hand in but all, yeah. all, all glory to God and his plan and the way that the spirit moves. Yeah. Um, what what yeah. does your leadership team look like for this ministry? Yeah. Great question. Me, apostolate. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for a while it was just me and we were this, about two years ago now. We were, we just had a sort of a interesting natural growth in the spring. Wait, you led I, it by yourself for five years. Um, no, so I think I'm in my fourth year of leading it. So the first year two years, I led it myself. Just you? Yeah. And um, when did it blow up? How many years into yeah, it before it blew up? About so about two years ago is when it blew up. So I was leading it for about two years by myself. So four okay. years total, two and okay. two. And it, I, I think it was just like we've ha had a really solid group of women and they started inviting other people and all of a sudden, we were growing out of, we were actually meeting at a different parish at the time, which was where one of our other school locations were. Okay. And we literally grew out of the, like out of the size of the room. There was like, not enough room in the room. I know. <laughs> like so, actually. Yeah, like actually, like practically we were like, where else can we meet? Because this doesn't fit our group yeah. anymore. <laughs> but as a leader, I knew that I 
wasn't going to be able to do it all myself. And especially because I, I wanted to be personal with people. Mm -hmm. I didn't Mm -hmm. want it to just be come in, get your hit and leave. Like I want, if people weren't able to make it, I wanted to follow up with them. I wanted to ask them what their prayer intentions were. I wanted to be able to Mm -hmm. check in. I wanted them to know that they're like people actually truly cared about them. And it wasn't just about like growing numbers. And I just knew I couldn't do it all. It It was getting too big. I couldn't be a thoughtful, intentional leader in the way that I wanted to alone. So I really, you know, started praying and asking the Lord to deliver more leaders. Um, just, you know, the heart, I'm like, Lord, the harvest is so abundant. Oh, but there, so abundant. I am, I am just a simple woman and I don't, I can't do this alone. So it was very humbling to see how he laid that out. And now we have leaders in spades, which is just, I'm so grateful. So yeah, I started praying that. And then shortly thereafter, like that, so that was spring and that summer, I found out that St. Pius Parish actually was running a reach more group. The parish had run it Uh and that there was one woman from our school that had gone through the training and I kind of knew her, but not, I didn't know her super well, but I asked her if she would get together with me. And so we got together and I just asked her about her experience with reach more and how that was going and what she found. And then I asked her what she was thinking for afterwards. And I said, what would you think about running a reach more group for our women's group? So that would be taking what you learned there and, and bringing it into this group of women that we already have going and praise God. It fit exactly what she was thinking for herself and hoping for her own apostolate moving forward. And so we had our kickoff event then that at the beginning of that following fall. And we had, I probably 30 women come, maybe 40 women come to our kickoff event. What was the kickoff event? Like what what did that look like? Similar to what I said before, but more of like a social and just kind of find out what's on tap for women's group yeah. for the Did year. Did you do it at the church? Yeah, just right at, at St. Pius Church. Put it in the blue yeah. on social media? Yeah, we have newsletters at all all the different campus schools. And so we put That's it, awesome. yeah, put some newsletters in there, um, encourage women to invite other women. And so we had our kickoff event and Jeannie, uh, who was leading the Reach More group, gave an explanation of what reach more was. And I gave an explanation of what the other group was going to be doing. And again, praise God, 10 women signed up to do reach more last. This was last year. And then we had a good solid group doing the other study. And so we ran those concurrently on Friday mornings. And then now this year, that group of ladies that went through reach more last year is are running the study the more evangelical study Mm -hmm. and we have another group of nine ladies that are going through the reach more training that just finished up this year so it's not about numbers as you know but i just you know it was like 19 women in the last two years have gone through leader training and so now as we vision out next year just really trying to ask god like what do you want this to look like now Mm -hmm. the harvest is abundant and the laborers are abundant (laughs) so like yeah Let's go. And what does this look? What does this look like? And what do you want us to really do with our time and energy and our evangelical hearts? Like, what what do you want? I love it. And it's so important that you saw that if people aren't showing up, it's not because they're doing so well that they don't need to be around good Christians anymore. There's probably something going on in their life. And Mm -hmm. you had the forward thought to be like, oh, I need people to make sure if they're not showing up, they're all right. That's what I did in my life when I didn't show up to stuff. So do you have have table leaders or or just a group of your leadership women that are like, we're just going to make sure people don't fall through the cracks. We're, We're committed to following up on a personal level when people aren't there just to see how they're doing. Yeah. To be completely honest, it's definitely something that I want to improve and um, not to sound cold, but I guess more systematized moving forward, just yeah. that people are, I don't know. Cause when you have a hundred people in your contact mm-hmm. list, you know, you can say, well, let's just keep an eye out for everybody, but that's a little too loose, yeah, but it doesn't actually I mean, happen. You've got seven so. kids. So I'm sure you and yeah. Scott have a system. <laughs> yeah. Lots of systems. But, um, and it's so not because you're cold parents. <laughs> no, no. So yeah, we're trying to, I think that is a big part of, you know, I don't think we're going to do anything super different next year 
outside of trying to find out how to just be more personal and intentional with what we have and then allow it to continue to grow as the spirit wants it to whoever he's going to bring um, to us, but then making sure that we do a really good job um, connecting yeah. with those people that um, God is calling to the group. And that's just really beautiful about it because there, you're right. There's no way to keep in touch with everyone, but it kind of seems like naturally the smaller groups are coming about and people going through each more feeling called to elaborate that. And I'm sure, and I'm, this is probably an assumption, but I'm sure that also the women that are there, they probably have their two or three women that they connect with on a more regular basis and form deeper friendship and accountability, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think those are the ways that you kind of make sure that you keep tabs with people. Yeah. And there, this year, the, uh, the other group, not the Reachmore group went through, um, a feminine genius study mm-hmm. and, depending on how many women would come each week, they would, as you asked Josh, like table leaders, they would split up into small groups when it came to discussion time. So they would do part of it, you know, together as a larger group, if there was say 20 or 30 women there, but then for, to allow, you know, everybody to be able to share and have some Mm -hmm. good discussion, they would break up into small groups and those reach more women would lead those small groups. Nice. Yeah. Hey, we've got time for like two more questions. I have a question. If I'm, I'm trying to think of like, if I was a parent at a school, this sounds awesome, but it's much easier when it's, if it's a thing, right? It sounds like everyone in your school knows about it. It's an exciting thing. It kind of sounds like the hip, cool thing to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether you're into the faith or not, it's like with a cycle coach. Of, I mean, come on. Yeah. It's like a, a group intense. of women that, that love to do this, et cetera. What about the person that's listening? That's like, that sounds like I'm thinking my high school. If I had a, a child and I wanted to be involved, a lot of people are the parents. We don't know if they're really Catholic. And I don't know if that's like a vibe that people would go for. And it would be kind of intimidating to just actually get started. So what yeah. do you say to the people that are like, that sounds really nice and I want accountability, but I don't want to be the Jesus weirdo. Like, <laughs> like how do, like, what would you say to them to encourage them to actually take the first step? I would probably say two things. First Don't be afraid to be the Jesus weirdo. (laughs) Be not afraid. And then I would say, I just, I have found a lot of, um, I've been able to trust God in the process and just really put it before him. So if you want to start a small group, ask the Lord to give you courage and then ask him to show you who to start with. Mm -hmm. And I think that he will answer that prayer. I like, I have a lot of confidence that he will answer that prayer. He definitely has for our group when it, whenever it came to leadership, like he, he, he wants it too. So Mm -hmm. you can definitely uh, work with him there and then, and start small, even three people as a small group. And if you can become a solid small group together, then, um, then it, then it can grow with the spirit, however the spirit wants to grow it. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm participating in the Reach More group this year. I did because um, I've never officially been through the Reach More training. I was going to ask if you had, yeah. Yeah, so I I was at St. Paul's at UW-Madison's campus 7,000 years ago when um, when the Evangelical Catholic was like in its intimacy of like yeah. Jason and Grace Simon were, you know, running St. Paul's uh, or had, yeah. just, had just left and were working at the EC. And so... I definitely got the training through being part of an apostolate that works. Yeah. Um, yeah, like that. So, but, and I've led small groups for a long time, but I've never officially done the training. So I wanted to do it myself. And one thing that I noticed as we're going through it is, um, there's a lot of fear that people have over like not being good enough or like, I don't know enough. Mm -hmm. I can't lead a small group. You know what, if I do this in my school community, you have to be like, a you know, a prophet or something. Yeah. And I just have tried to encourage women that it doesn't, you don't have to know it all. You just have to like trust God and work mm-hmm. with the Holy Spirit. And I think the most impactful times of my own apostolate have been even when I'm struggling, yeah. because the more transparent that I can be with my own struggles, people can connect with that and they can find you can find the Lord together. Like there was a time mm-hmm. that I was really doing a lot of prayer and reading about humility. Mm-hmm. And I shared that just really openly with the women in my study. And 
it was really cool to see how other people connected with it. And then even to the point where they were starting to read certain things or do, you know, certain prayers like the litany of humility. And Mm -hmm. um, one of the women shared it in her home and then her husband ended up taking it. He was like, he's a mechanic and he went posted it on the fridge at the mechanic shop. And it's like, just even, you know, saying like, Hey, I struggle with this too. And here's what I'm praying. And yeah, and you can just see the ripples going, God will use it all. He'll use mm-hmm. it all. Awesome. Yeah. And I think the things that people desire, like if you're desiring it, other people are desiring it too. Totally. And so just make the invitation, start small. Yep. And like you said, like, don't be afraid. And, you know, inviting other women for coffee on a Friday morning, seems like something they would say yes to. Or if you have kids, like the playground and chatting while the kids are playing, you know, like just start small. But um, I've noticed like a lot more mothers and women, like, and just people in general, you have, they have the desire that's greater. If you're desiring it, other people are desiring it too. So just an encouragement to take the steps. I think it's really important. Mm Yeah. Thanks for saying that, Gina. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gina, last, last question for you. So you went through the reach more throughout the 12 week reach more training and has a prayer companion. I'm wondering yes. what's the Lord doing in your life like right now, January through the last four months. How's He drawing you close to Him? That's that's a great question. <laughs> uh, I think the Lord is really asking me to trust Him in the things in my life, either in my own life or the lives of other people, whether it be my kids or whatnot. That I no need to change (laughs) that I really want to change. Um, Mm -hmm. Trusting the process that he is leading me through to get to the end result that I desire. So I think I'm, I'm a doer and I I just like, you know, when you have your mindset on something, it's like, okay, I want to fix this or do this. And it doesn't always just happen like that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes the process of years, um, and because the Lord can see it and, you know, whether, whether it be my own sinfulness, like he doesn't want to just put a bandaid over it. He wants to root it out and rooting something out and going through the whole process of that really takes time <laughs> mm-hmm. and a wisdom that I, I don't always have. I just want the result. And so I think he's just asking me to trust him in the process of growth and where he's leading me personally and leading all of the other people that I'm connected with. Awesome. Thanks. What would you say to anyone who's listening? If they're thinking about a similar apostolate, do it, just do it. (laughs) Just do it. (laughs) Just do it. Just, I mean, yeah. Ask for some humility because even if it doesn't go the way you think the Lord will use it all and don't be afraid. Awesome. Well, this has been a really fun interview. Thanks, Gina. Thank you both. Appreciate it. Marty, that was great, wasn't it? It was. It was. Well, hey, friends. Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of the Reach More podcast. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Gina. Today, more than ever, like Gina said, the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few, but God wants you to join his laborers and run with King Jesus to reach the lost. If this is the desire of your heart, I hope that the Lord will point you in the right direction, and I'm sure he will. If you haven't downloaded our app, you can do so. Just go to your app store and search for the Evangelical Catholic. We have a a tool in there called the Define, Plan, Act tool, and you can use that to get started to discern your personal apostolate. Please consider joining the Reach More Mission financially with a monthly gift if the Lord puts that on your heart, and we look forward to talking with you next time. God bless you.